This is your bobbin winder. You stick your bobbin on this metal part right here and push it over and it threads your bobbin. This right here is your spool. This is where your thread will be held. Always make sure you have this little plastic cap on the end, otherwise your thread will fly off the end of the spool. Right here we have the tension guide. Make sure it is on four at all times, otherwise your stitches are going to be very loose and they won't stay in place. This part of the machine is the thread guide. As I show you the entirety of the thread guide, there will be numbers that show you what each of these items are and where the thread should be going first. So you go around this right here, down this cavity, and then there's a two right here, and you go back up, wrap it around the metal thread guide, you come back down, loop it around this notch right here, and then you put it through the eye of the needle here. And that's how you thread your needle, which is this part right here. Okay, down here we have our bobbin casing. Our bobbin is already in its holder. I'm going to put this back on. This right here, this metal piece is the throat plate. These metal teeth under where the needle is are called feed dogs. And along here, these are your seam measurements. So this right here is the 6 eighth of an inch measurement line. Where you are going to be sewing most of your seams is going to be at this 5 eighths line right here. Unless the pattern tells you otherwise, that's where you're going to be sewing. This part of the machine that goes up and down that rocks is the presser foot. This is what holds the fabric in place. Over here is the presser foot lever. Right now it is in the take up position and if I lower it gently, it lowers the presser foot onto the feed dogs. And that is what makes your sewing machine move as well as hold your fabric in place. Make sure that when you move this up and down, that you do it gently, because if you don't, it will hurt the feed dogs and your fabric won't go through the machine the way it should. Here are the stitch collector collection. This is where you're going to choose different stitches that you will need while you are sewing. The ones that you will use the most frequently are these right here, the regular stitches, the zigzag stitches, and then over here are buttonhole stitches. Those are the ones that you are going to need. These other ones are fancier ones that aren't necessary for this class. Over here, we have the stitch selection over here. Just leave this one right here alone this one is going to be the one that you are going to be using throughout the class. This makes your stitch width larger or smaller. This little dial here just makes it so that you can see up in the screen. If you turn it this way, turn it to the right, you can't see it. It turns the brightness down. If you turn it to the left, it turns it up. And right here, this is a function that we will not be using very often. This helps lock in your stitching, but there's another way to do that that is more universal, and I'll show you that in a bit. This right here is the manual stitch button. If you push this once, I'll show you over here. 
it makes the needle go down, push it again, and it makes it go up. This right here is the other way to secure your stitching that I told you about. This is the reverse stitch. It could always, often, it's a lever or it's a button. With this, you hold it in and stitch backwards, release, and you stitch forwards. This helps hold the stitches together. And this part right here, this dial here, is called the hand wheel. The hand wheel makes it so you can stitch with your hand, just like it sounds, okay? This is used most frequently when you are stitching at the end of a seam. This helps give you more control, keeps you on the fabric, and sometimes you only need one more stitch to make it to a corner, and this is the best way to do that. Then down here on the floor, we have our foot pedal. Some may look like this, others are going to look like this. And this is just like a gas pedal on any vehicle. You push it and the machine will go. You push it too hard and it'll go very fast and that is not the goal. Our goal is to stay slow and in control. And last but not least, this is your power switch. If it's flipped up, it's on. Flipped down, it's off. A good way to tell if it's on or off is right here. When it's off, there is no light. When it is on, the light is on.